Okay. All right, welcome back to What in the Hermeneutic. I am Paul Koch. This is Cindy Koch. She is our uh, hermeneutic, uh, hermeneutical expert. No, I don't know what we're calling you. She's a student of biblical hermeneutics, and she is guiding our conversation uh, on this topic. Uh, and and we're keep moving through today. We're gonna uh, we're gonna have a conversation really about what is hermeneutics, distinguishing it out from exegetical theology. Uh, or its place alongside that, maybe you would say, uh, and and what it means to kind of ask some good questions. So it's it's sort of why even consider this, um, uh, and that if you know, the the truth is even if you're not having this discussion, you're doing it anyway. Mm-hmm. So you might as well know what you're doing. Uh, and and for people like me, if you're a preacher, uh, this is really huge because there is a big responsibility laid upon you. Uh, so so take the time to do it. So we're, we're glad you're here to join the conversation. Uh, like and subscribe if you haven't done that yet. And let's get after it. Away, spit out my Lord in every way. Yet I'm still welcome in the yard. All right, Cindy, so we're back at it. Okay. And uh, the big question then, as we are just scratching surfaces, uh, what is her Yeah. I get that. I mean, it's one of my favorite things to talk about. But when I say the word, the first thing that everybody does is they kind of like wrinkle their face up and they're like, what is hermeneutics? Um, We touched on this a little bit last time. It's discovering the principles that we use when we come to the word of God to try to figure out like how we're interpreting the scripture. This is a little bit different than actually interpreting the scriptures so like what you guys do on craft of preaching um every week is you open up the text you read it from the original language you try to get some nuances and words and phrases put together what is this word translate into Mm -hmm. what form is the word is it a genitive is it a whatever right and at the end like what is your goal there yeah. Our goal is to come with to yeah a uh, a translation of it, mm-hmm. right? But not English. just for the sake of translation, but for for preaching, preaching, yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah obviously, right? Yeah, yeah. yeah. And so um, all of that together is what we would call exegesis. Okay. So you're looking at the text and you're trying to communicate the meaning of the text okay. uh, to others is pretty much what okay. that turns out to be. Hermeneutics is a different focus. We're not taking a particular text and trying to give each one, you know, its meaning by looking at what we're doing. We're looking at the overarching principles, how you are doing that, how you're looking at the words. What, why did you get this meaning um, for a parable, let's say, okay. what parables are. So you're, we're looking at the philosophy of language, maybe the philosophy more specifically of what we're doing with the word of God, how we're thinking about it and how we're communicating it. So, for, I mean, for example, here's a good example um, of the difference. Uh, let's look at Mark. Yeah. What did we say? Mark 4? Mark 4. Uh, so the parable of the sower, we we don't have to read the whole parable. We know that, right? He goes out, he sows. Some falls on the path. Rocky ground. Uh uh, the weeds, right? The good soil, right? All these things. And then go ahead. quickly, though, I, this is not. We kind of talked last week about how we couldn't just open the Bible and get a literal translation of yeah. what's happening. Um, so this is a great example. This parable. We're not yeah. talking about a narrative of how to how to be a good farmer because and sow your seeds. Yeah, it's actually <laughs> a terrible way to be a farmer. Yeah, right. You're just like throwing it everywhere. Yeah. But yeah, so it's clearly not about. Farming, yes. right? <laughs> so this is, you know, non-literal right. language. What are we going to do with this? Yeah. And then we have Jesus step in. Yeah. So then uh, our Lord uh, speaks uh, and tells them the purpose of parables. But if we go down, um, he he then he uh, sort of decodes the parable, mm-hmm. right? Uh, he, he ends up saying the sower sows the word. Ta-da, that's what he's sowing, right? 
And these are the ones on the path where the word is sown, and they hear, and Satan immediately comes and takes away the word that is sown on them. And these are the ones sown on rocky ground, and the ones uh, the ones who, when they hear the word, immediately receive it with joy, but they have no root in themselves, but endure for a while, then with tribulation or persecution rises on account of the word, they immediately fall away. And on he goes through doing just that, just decoding the parables the way like I learned it. Like that's when he's... Sure. That, that language. And that's a great example of Jesus uh, exegeting the text, right? He's taking something that was kind of a non-literal story, if you will, and he's giving it meaning and applying it to the people he's talking to. Uh, now, he's not doing hermeneutics. What he's not doing is giving principles for which we're looking at every single parable. You know, right. He's doing something very specific with those words for those people. But now the principles of parables, uh, actually, you know, Jesus doesn't really tell us about okay. <laughs> too many of those things. Right. So these are just kind of the things that we are recognizing from the way we think about language, the way right. our traditions kind of have brought us up to see the, the word of God and such. What are we doing when we come to a text like this? And so I, we'll get into what we do specifically with parables because sure. that is... Uh, piece, that's a big sure. piece, yeah, because it is not just a kind of a straightforward reading of a narrative. Yeah, we've actually talked about that in, we when have. we did these videos a while ago, yeah. But the point I'm just trying to make here is exegesis is not the same as, as hermeneutics. Right. Hermeneutics is that one step back, looking at the overarching principles of how we're, um, how we're looking at things. So I think one helpful way to just give us a starting point with... Uh, how to think about the scripture is to kind of think about the different pieces that are going on here. So first of all, the, there is an author. Somebody wrote this down somewhere. Uh, there is a text okay. that we receive. Yeah. And then there's us as the reader trying to understand what that what was written. And just a lot of things go into that the the author wasn't writing directly to me so when i pick up like genesis there are things that i have to consider about the author how he wrote it the text in its form given to us or that you know the text that i'm reading like where did this even come from how do i you know how do i know that all of these pieces of fragments of paper were fit together to make this text and then lastly, how am I coming to the text uh, as, as somebody who's reading it and trying to gain meaning from it? So those three pieces are different ways that we can kind of come at this uh, just baseline, how we start thinking about the principles of hermeneutics, how we come at this text that was not written to us. Okay. So author, text, reader. Mm -hmm. And it is the interplay of these things is the whole world of hermeneutics. Would that be a safe way to say it? I mean, there's, a, yeah. I, I mean, that's those, where. Those, yeah, those, that's what we're going to be talking about. Okay. Yeah, <laughs> those yeah. three kind of realms, how they fit together. Uh, and just kind of the best way that we as, we just have to recognize, you know, we as the readers, we weren't there when this stuff was written. And so what is the best way that a reader can understand what a writer, what an author yeah. has said? Yeah. Another layer of difficulty, or not, depending on how you look at it, is the Bible is both a human author and a divine author. We confess that the Bible is the word of God. So, you know, when we consider who has written the Bible, we have to consider also that this scripture was given to us from a non-human author from god okay yeah someone above what yeah yeah what we well hear. yeah we were it was funny we were just having this uh partially a conversation about this last night um on our weird date nights but uh we were uh in which i was I was talking about those harmonies of the gospels that, that are mm -hmm. used to be more popular than I think they are today, where they kind of smush it together. And I said, you know, and I think it was, it was because of my training and probably yours as well. It's like that feels really weird because you kind of want the human author mm -hmm. 
in a sense to have their say like they're telling it tell the way story. they want to tell it sure. right and they've got a they got a, a a rhythm to it they have a in, intentionality to it but then to kind of go the other way i mean that is well there is only one divine author behind all these and right. so there's this there is this greater thing and so to there is a wrestle that you have to do with all that yeah right? i think so yeah yeah cuz there are particularities in the stories but then it also fits into a kind of a greater truth where all of these stories came from okay. and you know like i said we confess that this was written by god through many different human authors and so we're going to find a lot of different perspectives a lot of different kinds of literature um but it has one clear purpose and that clear purpose is to point us to God's son who, okay. you know, saved the world. So. All right. Okay. <laughs> that's it. I mean, that's just really quick. Like, why are we even doing hermeneutics? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Because we want to clearly piece out what we're doing, how we're understanding, what we're bringing to the text, because mm -hmm. we didn't talk about that part. You know, we as readers, uh, we have this whole kind of worldview, maybe, of yeah. how that's... reality should work. I mean, is that the same yeah. reality well, I, that the authors so, are dealing with? So, so. As, a, as a preacher, I remember uh, early on when I first um, uh, was ordained, and this is now my task in life, and, um, and I remember that, that kind of terrifying, if you will, realization that, okay, I have this text which wasn't written it's you know the book of revelation doesn't start you know john to the seven churches in southern california in the you know from the 21st and a half century or whatever that it, that it's you know it it's written a long time ago to a different world really mm -hmm. and so that there's this work realize that this work to get back to there to be able to read it better but then there's work coming back the other way to carry this mm -hmm. to today, right? Mm -hmm. And so all of the these become the principles of mm -hmm. interpretation. These are this is hermeneutics. This yes. is that that uh daunting task. But you have to deal with it. Right? Yeah. Well and you are doing it. So yeah. whether you okay, want that's a good way. Yeah. Uh, whether you want to admit yeah. it or not, it's there. If you're reading the Bible and giving it some sort of meaning, if you're not giving it any sort of meaning, you're, you're still. still doing something. <laughs> okay. You're saying right. something about Fair. the text, and you have principles of interpretation. Um, don't you want to know what those are? Yeah. yeah. <laughs> for your, I mean, just for your own good. Yeah. Uh, and then if yes, you're in charge of. The faith of others being a pastor or preacher or something like that then absolutely you want to be faithful to your task in putting forth the best principles according to your confession right. so that you can rightly preach the word all right uh well that's i mean hey great we are on the way <laughs> um uh, take a minute to like and subscribe if you haven't done that yet uh, share this with your friends. Share your comments below. Uh, uh, your, you know, if, if this is new to you, if you have other insights, uh, uh, things you want us to address in the future, we want Cindy to uh, kind of do some work on uh, to guide our conversation. It'd be great. Uh, but we're going to kind of keep moving through uh, having these conversations, see how this plays out, uh, specifically for for preachers, but. Um, uh, you know, for anyone who's reading the Word of God, and uh, I, you got to make some decisions. So let's know why we're doing what we're doing. Mm -hmm. At least maybe ask some good questions. Uh, so uh, continue to uh, follow, and God bless your preaching.